today on Divorce Court. Communication with me and Tremaine is rocky and it's rough. She loves to talk. I think her tongue is the strongest muscle in her body. When I met Tremaine, he was outgoing. And now all he wants to do is watch football. I need you meaning to listen twice as much as she talks. That's why God gave you two ears and one mouth. You go from zero to 100 real quick, and I'm tired of it. You mean it does not hear anything I say. Tremaine, you need to step it up. Divorce court is now in session. The Honorable Judge Lynn Toller presiding. Good day, ladies and gentlemen. I'm here today with Yamina Parson and Tremaine Parson. Mr. and Mrs. Parson, you have been married for three years, but you've been together for four and a half, and you have one child together. You love each other, but there has been a bump in the road. And Mrs. Parson, you've come to me for my advice, so I'm going to start with you. Why don't you tell me what's going on in your marriage and why you've come to see me today? We've been married for approximately three years, and I... I realized that our communication just started going just started going down after I gave birth to my daughter. I was diagnosed with postpartum depression and after that it felt like just communication just went down. How long were you suffering from postpartum depression? I can remember about 9 months is when 9 I, months. Yeah. Were you getting treated for it? No. That's a doctor thing. You know what I mean? I think pe people really need to pay attention to women right after they give birth because that can happen. And it's just like, she's not just moody. She's got an issue going on, a hormonal issue. Ms. Was Mr. Parsons understanding and helpful? Initially, he wasn't. Um, just because I felt like he just didn't understand. When it comes to postpartum depression, nobody can see it physically. Mm -hmm, right. Somebody that can see your arm being broke, you could see that, but right. he didn't understand. He didn't understand what was happening with you, but he saw what was up and just stepped in and handled his business. Yes. Because he didn't know why you weren't doing it, but he decided he was going to go ahead and do it. That, yes. That's what happened. Did you tell your doctor you weren't feeling right? I did. They took a depression scale every time you go to the, uh -huh. the doctors, and I did. I... I I was honest with the depression scale. Well, what did they tell you? I know it's got nothing to do with nothing, but what did they tell you? <laughs> nothing. See, now, now, I'm gonna tell you this. My sister's a doctor, and she tells me, she says, you have to be insistent. You yes. know how your body is, and you know how you feel. Just because he's got a DR in front of his name and a whole bunch of letters behind him doesn't mean you, you know what I mean? He, just because he said it or she didn't say it, you go, you say, hey, yeah. it's not right. Yeah. You know, and if they don't help you, get somebody else. I'm done. That's true. <laughs> you the man. Try to be. You, you the man. You showed up. You didn't understand what was going on. You stepped in and you took care of business. When did you realize it was a real medical disorder that was happening? Or did you not really understand uh, that until later? I knew everything from the beginning. Oh, you knew from the beginning? Yeah. Because um, she was breastfeeding at first, mm -hmm. and she was getting tired of breastfeeding. She needed a special bra that held the mm -hmm. pumps for. Mm -hmm. So I went out and got her this special bra. This bra right. cost like seventy dollars. Right. That's not even counting the pump, you know. R right, right, right. So I'm thinking we're good. You know, yeah. I got the special bra and everything, and all of a sudden she's tired of doing that now. Now, mind you, you don't have to do anything but put the bra on. Right. And it breastfeeds it takes for you. Care. Take, yeah, you have to do anything. But when she got tired of doing that, I knew something was wrong. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What happened after that? Why, why did things become bumpy? Well, it, the situation <laughs> with my job, I had to go back. Tremaine took care of Riley uh, the baby. when she was a newborn mm -hmm. from, I think it was like, like 9 p.m. he would start all the way till I got home from work around 3 p.m. Now, I try, to, I try to come home earlier, but sometimes the way my job is, is just you can't go right. home sometimes. And I knew he was frustrated. I just, he couldn't, he just didn't express himself. Mm -hmm. Was it difficult for you to talk about the concerns or the problems that you were having? Well, I don't, I don't really like talking about my problems. You, what talking gonna do? What, well, you said that to a woman. <laughs> I'm not hey, how crazy that. What kind of background are you from? What do you, what, what, what was your life I, growing up? Violent. Tell me about it. I grew up in North Richmond. Uh huh. No police department. Yeah. So everybody was on their own. Yeah. Did you have to use a firearm? Yeah, multiple times. Really? Yeah. What do you? She do just now hearing this though. Yeah. <laughs> you didn't know about that? I did. Uh, just based on where he's from, it's un it, so North Richmond is unincorporated. Uh -huh. That means yeah. 
no yeah, one goes no man's yeah. land yeah um and just from you know knowing the area i knew he had to use that what do you do now for a living i work at california department of correction ain't no talking in there <laughs> <laughs> oh i get it you got to be hard look hard feel all hard time. all the time and if you let your guard down that could be a, a life ender was North, what was it, North Ridge? Where'd you? North Richmond. North Richmond. Was that the Myrtle Capital at one time? Yeah. Wow. And it's extremely small. Yeah. But he got out. Right. You know what I mean? He got out. <laughs> he working, got a beautiful wife. And a, yeah, yeah. see there? I just I didn't love get you that already. From I don't know what to do, huh? I didn't get out by talking. No, no, you did not. <laughs> and, 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 and I understand that. And, 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 and I understand who you are and the way you, and why you're that way. And I don't really want you to change, but I want... Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> but what I do want you to do is gather another skill that you can use when you need it. Don't, doesn't mean you got to be a chit-chatter. Don't mean you got to turn into a little junior woman chit-chatting about your feelings and stuff. But it's a skill you can use to put in your arsenal. Are you, are you willing to do that? Yeah. You say you can't relate to her family at all. So I want to take a moment, turn to that, and talk about why you can't. We're close. We hug. We hug when you come and we hug when you leave. He thought that we were fake. When we're like, give me a hug. Well, hug. he's not a warm and fuzzy brother. <laughs> no, he's not. Mr. Parson, you say that her family doesn't like you and doesn't treat you well. Why don't you give me a couple examples of how her family treats you? It's just that they're like, I'm from a different world than D Different world. So I don't feel comfortable mingling. Well, what kind of world are you from? I mean, Squareville. we know it's not North Richmond. What, what, where do you come from? Um, I come from Central California. So my background is extremely religious. Mm -hmm. I remember going to church, especially in the summertime, about average four days out of a seven-day week. Bible study, Sunday school, choir rehearsal, mm -hmm. uh, vacation Bible, you know, all the... All of that. Yeah. We're, we're close. Mm -hmm. We hug. We hug when you come and we hug when you leave. And Tremaine's not used to that. He, he thought that we were fake mm -hmm. when we're like, give me a hug. Well, hug. he's not a warm and fuzzy brother. That's... No, he's not at all. You said he doesn't uh, get along well with a, a super white environment of your employment. No, he Tell doesn't. me about that. Every time we go to anywhere that has the majority white people, mm -hmm. he doesn't want to go or he starts sweating profusely. Mm -hmm. Now, <laughs> there's... <laughs> yeah. There's this one example where we went on vacation and invited our friends to bed and breakfast. Now, every morning you eat breakfast with everybody at the same time. It, he did not want to go. The first time, he was like, I'm just going to wait in the car. The second morning, he was like, I'm at the door, but you didn't answer the phone, so I'm not going to go in. There was the last day I had to pull his arm to actually go eat breakfast with us. And How'd he do? He was sweating. It was bad. <laughs> it bad was bad. He, he wouldn't stop sweating. It was Mr. Bad, Parson, judge. do white people make you nervous? No. <laughs> it's not like I get nervous. I'm comfortable in my environment. What makes you sweat about going out with her co-workers? Because she always want to go somewhere where it costs heck of money, the food be nasty. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. I'd rather go to a taco truck. Right, right, right. I'm, I'm cool. with you. I'm with you. You know I'm what I'm saying? You. I don't want to go spend $200 for some half-cooked fish and hard potatoes. <laughs> I don't want to do it. I can't Judge, do it. Judge. Judge. And then you still be hungry. After you eat that, you still hungry. Now you're in bed, stomach growling. Now you're mad for a whole other reason. <laughs> That's, that's that caught fish is. was delicious. No, it wasn't. He's talking about the caught fish dinner we had. It was good. And you ain't lying. I know exactly no, what you're talking saying. about. I, I know, I know exactly what you're talking about. Mr. Parsons, I, I love myself some you. Um, <laughs> <laughs> from here, we're going to go on to your sex life, briefly and lightly. Okay. But we understand that there are some bribes involved, and I want to understand <laughs> how that him. works. So, there's a reason why he... 
goes with me to various dinners and places. Okay, baby, I'll go over here. However, by 10 p.m. Yes. It, it has to be on and pop it. Would you convert to a different religious faith for your partner? Tell us what you think at Divorce Court. Divorce Court will be right back. So, I understand there is an issue regarding bribes and sex. What am I talking about <clears throat> here? So, there's a reason why he goes with me to various dinners and places. Yeah, yeah, I get you. I got you. I know, I know, I know what you're saying. Yeah, yeah you know. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, baby, I'll go over here. However, by 10 p.m. Yes. It, it has to be on and pop it. I never let... I, I never make a man defend his sexual issues, situation, or otherwise. Should you want to inquire, should you want to put your two cents in, you may do so. If not, we will move forward. The reason why is like that is because we have a two-year-old. Right. She almost three, so she ripping and running around the house. Right. You don't really have time. Like, right, right. And you both work, you don't have time. Right. So if we leave it and I don't have my daughter, oh, yeah. It's on. <laughs> you better believe it. <laughs> I don't think that's a bribe, really. I think that's kind of like the delicate dance of marriage. You know, everybody, you know, you, you, you yeah, okay, oh, I move this over here, you, go, you do that over there. It's, it's, it, it's what we do. Do you think that there is an issue in this marriage, Mr. Parson? Uh, I think she doesn't really listen well. Why doesn't she... Why don't you think she listens? She just... I don't know why she don't listen. She well, what don't. gives you the impression? Give me an example that would lead me to believe that she's not paying attention when you're talking to her. She, um, she had to go shop for a student. I told her, take her key. I'm going to the back of the house. I won't hear you. I'm going to put Riley to sleep, so I won't mm -hmm. hear you. Knock at the door. You can ring the doorbell and knock at the door. I won't hear you because the TV's on. Fans going, I won't hear you, so take your key. She says, okay, leaves, comes back. All I hear is boom, boom, boom. Why are you open the door screaming and yelling at me, and I just told you to take your key. I'm not going to hear you when you come home. So if you would have listened to me when I said take your key, and the mm -hmm. reason why I told you to take your key, you would have never You wouldn't have been banging to... at the door, yeah. and you never would have been, been let been out. Made... Is that constant, or is That's that... constant. Every once in a while. That's constant. Do you find yourself in trouble or problematic because you didn't pay attention to what he told you? I feel like Tremaine is the one that doesn't listen. I feel like... Give me an example where you say he didn't listen to you. There was this one incident within this past week. My job is uh, housing. I have to go in and out, emergencies, I gotta leave. Right. So I told him... Um, I'm going to be back at a certain time. I wasn't. He calls me like, well, where are you at? You said you'll be this, that. Riley needs, you know, A, B, C. Riley needs some food. I said, you got to be patient with me. He's like, no, you told me you're going to be back this and that. But I said, I also told you, you know how it is with my job. So he didn't listen to that half of the portion. Like, I'll be back between this time frame. However... If something else happens, you have to give me leeway. And he feels like I'm either making something up when it comes to me being able to leave and do what I have to do. Do you think do. she's wishy-washy? Yeah. Most definitely. She, I don't think she believes what she's saying now. <laughs> oh, yeah. oh, oh, I know. oh, oh, I so know what's going on here. And I, I'm so crazy about the both of you. I don't know what to do. And I'm going to tell you what to do about what's not going right here. Because... You are a fantastic couple, a fantastic couple. Gorgeous woman, solid, handsome dude, and you've got a few little regular married hiccups that we can just iron out, and you can ride on out into the sunset. What's the greatest challenge when both partners have demanding careers? Share your opinion on Twitter and Instagram at Divorce Court. Divorce Court will be right back. You guys are standing at the end of the great hormonal divide. If femininity is all the way at a zero, not meaning less than, just, just a place, and maleness is at a ten, you know, you're down there near the zero and you're up there near the ten. I got a husband. I'm married to a twelve. So I know you. 
you don't want to hear half of what I got to say. None of it. The half of that, the, the <laughs> half that I do say, you don't hear half of that because you weren't paying attention. You don't want, you, you don't want to talk back at me if I told you one thing. If I told you it was A, and I said A, but possibly B, but could be C, and A don't happen, I got to hear about why it was B or C. I know you. Now let me tell you how to be a you that she can, she can deal with a little better. First of all, number one, you engage in strategic listening. I honestly believe my husband don't hear 80% of what I say. Good man. I really don't. <laughs> but he does pay attention when he's supposed to. Okay. And he repeats what I said so I know he heard it. So if every once in a while he repeats what I said, I'm satisfied. Now, <laughs> <laughs> knowing that he ain't gonna pay attention to 80% of what you say, you gotta really understand what you need him to hear. Now, I say a whole lot more than he wants to hear, and he knows to sit there. Quiet. But I touch him on his knee, and I said, but baby, I need you to hear this part. I'm leaving tomorrow at 5, and I don't have a kid. Whatever it is, baby, I need you to hear this part. So I can give him all the who shot John, and he just floats through it like, a, like bobbing in the water. But when, <laughs> but when I touch his knee and I said, baby, I need you to hear this, he hones in, and then he repeats it. So you can make him hear more by saying less. <sighs> Now, I want you to realize this. I want you to think of sex as directly related to verbiage. Ouch. I don't, you can do it. You do, no, yeah. How much <laughs> loving do you want? Men jump through hoops for that stuff. I'm you know, you know, you jump, you, you jump through hoops for it. You know, look at it like it's a hoop. Oh, baby, what you got to say today? <laughs> what happened to you? Ooh, that's pretty. Catch her off guard. Call her on the job. Hey, baby, thinking about you. You don't even have to hear back. Bam! Sex. 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 Come in. Hey, baby, what's going on? Touch it on the bottom. Love you. Sex. 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 She got one story she want to tell you about her hair. You don't care about her hair, but you say, what's up with your hair? Sex. <laughs> Sex. Sex. I can do that, Judge. It's all a game. It's all about knowing that. what your target is and be willing to work for your target. You're just working for what you want. You understand that? Yes, ma'am. Best of luck to both of you. This matter is Thank a Thank you, job. Judge. You gonna be a better listener? Yeah. If she talked to less, it'd be easier. <laughs> oh, gosh. Good point. Good point. <laughs>